Every drive in a Porsche, especially in a 911, has a sense of occasion. Whenever you approach the sleek, aerodynamic, familiar yet exotic body and admire its athletic, muscular curves, something inside you readies itself. Your past experiences condition you to anticipate the power, fun, and adventure that await, no matter how routine the destination or how mundane the route. As soon as you shatter the silence of your surroundings with a turn of your wrist, ordinary yields to exceptional. Excitement displaces indifference. Our drive today is anything but routine or mundane. In honor of completing our second anniversary with our Porsche 911 991.2 long-term test car, and recognizing the end of the 991 era as the age of the new 992 Dons, we're taking our 991.2 on an epic road trip from the LA area up the Pacific Coast Highway to Big Sur and back down to LA. And what better place than California to tie in some ecological analysis? We're going to drive up the coast in the car's most eco-friendly drive mode and then return in the sport drive mode, all while marveling at the best of California's coastal beauty. Good morning. It's bright and early in Westlake Village, and we are about to take a long drive along the Pacific Coast Highway up north to Big Sur. Okay, so we're good to go, full gas, and the trip computers are reset, and this is gonna be a great drive. Okay, so we just had to travel a little south in order to go north because we need to get to the Pacific Coast Highway. Uh, so we're taking some of the canyon roads at Canaan um, and we'll hit the Pacific Coast Highway in not too long and then we'll be northbound along the coast up to Big Sur. As we come around this bend, the ocean will really come into view. We have a great day for driving. It's 81 degrees outside Fahrenheit. It's so calm, there aren't any waves. <laughs> so we're now approaching the Pacific Coast Highway. PCH. Down here for a few hundred miles. Here we go. There's the auto start stop feature, which is automatically enabled every time I turn the car on. I'm not sure how I feel about it. It seems that it always shuts off just when I'm about to take my foot off the brake and accelerate. So that can't be good for fuel economy, but I guess they, the engineers have done their testing and it's a common feature of any efficient car. I guess on balance, you save more gas with the engine shut off than you burn starting it. One of the interesting fuel saving features of this car is when you're in normal drive mode and the circumstances are right, like you're not going uphill and you're, the car is able to, to coast by itself, it will shift into neutral by itself. There. See how the tack dropped to well below 1,000 RPM? And then when I put my foot back on, it rev matches and puts me back in gear. When I'm in sport mode, 
conversely, it doesn't do that. You take your foot off the gas and it just it keeps it in gear. In our previous generation 991.1 Carrera C4S, low RPM power availability was always a bit of an issue. Although the engine was naturally aspirated, the high-end only power delivery created an experience that was strangely reminiscent of turbo lag. Not so in this twin turbo 991.2 C4S. The torque curve is incredibly flat, with peak torque, 368 pound-foot of it, available starting as early as 1700 RPM and extending up to 5000 RPM. The 420 horsepower, achieved at 6500 RPM, is capable of launching the all-wheel drive body from 0 to 100 kilometers in about 3.8 seconds, on the way to a top speed of 302 kilometers per hour. We're excited to experience how the new 911-992 compares. Although Highway 1 is known as the Pacific Coast Highway, a good portion of it is also inland. We've been lucky enough today that a lot of the wildflowers along the sides of the road are in full bloom, especially yellow ones. So we've gotten some golden mountain facades and it's been absolutely spectacular. Where the car really shines is in the perfect balance between power, responsiveness, and handling that 55 years of German engineering have achieved. The rear axle steering, now available on all 911s, makes a noticeable difference in stability at high speeds and in turning radius at low. The car is truly a symphony on wheels, with each component playing its part, achieving precision we can feel through each steering input. about three hours and 45 minutes into the drive and we just stopped for lunch in Pismo Beach. It was a beautiful setting, perched uh, atop some bluffs overlooking the ocean. So far in the three hours and 45 minutes that we've been driving, we've been averaging about 9.4 liters per 100 kilometers and we've traveled about 212 miles. I'm gonna try tomorrow in sport mode to drive with a similar aggressiveness as today, so that really the only difference between today and tomorrow on the way back is the drive mode. And uh, I'll try to keep my, my driving style consistent. So we're now at getting to some of the most beautiful parts of the drive. We've got about 22 miles left until Ragged Point, which is our stopping point in Big Sur. And now we're in a quaint little town called Old Cambria. A quick update on our mileage, because we're about to refuel. We've gotten about 25 miles per gallon on this tank, which is the equivalent of 9.3 liters per 100 kilometers. In the 991.1, it was difficult to tell whether the spoiler was up from the cabin looking through the rear view. In the 991.2, it noticeably emerges into view, which is cool. As we get closer and closer to Ragged Point, the drive is getting increasingly more spectacular. The roads right along the water are undulating and there are stretches of straight, 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 and then there are really curvy places. It's a terrific place to appreciate the car um, and also just take in some of the world's most breathtaking scenery.
Here we are at the gas station at Ragged Point. We gotta refuel, the fuel light just came on. The car is extremely comfortable for any car, let alone a sports car. At least the front two seats are. The back two seats are good for storage or for people you hate. So our average consumption for the trip has been 9.3 liters per 100 kilometers, which is 25 miles per gallon. We traveled 350 miles on this tank, a uh, total driving time of 6 hours and 12 minutes. So we're going to refuel and then switch into sport mode and drive all the way back to the Los Angeles area and see what our mileage is. Although the sports exhaust package doesn't produce a drastically different sound compared to the standard package, the centrally mounted twin tailpipes are very sporty and the optional fuel cap with aluminum look and finish definitely elevates refueling. We just started heading back south and now we're in sport mode. The sun is just starting to set and we have some magnificent scenes ahead of us. After two years, we only have two complaints with the car. One more serious, one more minor. The more serious has to do with the AC. We've had two AC issues with the car over the two years we've had it. The first was apparently because mice were attracted to some wiring that is apparently easily accessible to hungry rodents. The second was because of a coolant leak. Suffice it to say, it's a bit annoying to have to endure warm air blowing into the cabin on a hot day. Wow, this drive is just absolutely breathtaking. We just stopped at a lighthouse which we're driving by right now. And we took a walk to the beach to film it. And the beach was closed to the public because it was absolutely covered with elephant seals, which happened to be great white sharks' favorite meals, which happens to be the reason why I don't swim in the Pacific Ocean. But they were unbelievably docile and uh, just little balls of blubber. They were very, very cute. but I just can't get over these roads. And driving in sport mode really makes all the difference. We'll see what kind of uh, fuel premium you have to pay though to enjoy this extra performance. This is some of the most spectacular land in California. And two things are very striking. One, it's very undeveloped. There, there are no homes, there are barely any towns here. And two, compared to a lot of other areas in like Northern California, Southern California, this Central Coast area is pretty bereft of tourists. We've had no traffic and any place we've gotten out, there might have been one or two other cars parked, but that's it. Ironically, one of the settings I have turned on during our sport mode segment of driving is the sports exhaust. Sports exhaust um, increases the sound of the exhaust and it also allows more airflow. Freer flowing exhaust actually means more fuel efficiency. I don't think the added fuel efficiency from the sports exhaust will outweigh the detriment to fuel economy that all of the other driving enhancements of sport mode will have. The minor nitpick has to do with the exhaust volume. Yes, we've entered the eco-friendly age of the turbo, and we love just about everything about the 991.2's twin turbo. No lag, terrific, uniform power delivery, better fuel economy. The one downside is the 992's roar is less throaty, guttural, aggressive, and loud than its predecessors. 
The trend toward turbo hasn't dashed all hope in this department, however. We recently reviewed a 991.2 GTS Cabriolet, one step up Porsche's performance ladder from the C4S, and that car sounded properly angry, especially under decent acceleration. So perhaps Porsche will apply its magic to lesser 911s in future generations, similar to what it has done on the 991.2 GTS. Or, maybe environmental regulations will ultimately squelch the scream of the sports car for good. We look forward to hearing how the new generation 992 compares. Toggling between drive modes stiffens or softens suspension noticeably, and the ride is especially hard when you set the Porsche Active Stability Management, which is standard on all S models, into sport mode. From Westlake Village all the way up to Big Sur in normal drive mode, and from Big Sur back down to Westlake Village in sport mode. We just got back. We're exhausted. It was a fantastic drive with breathtaking vistas. And now we're going to sleep. We'll get you the statistics on the fuel economy in the morning. On our drive back in sport mode, we averaged 10.3 liters per 100 kilometers, or 22.8 miles per gallon, in sport mode, compared to the 9.5 liters per 100 kilometers, or 24.8 miles per gallon, we achieved in normal mode on the way out. It's possible that city driving produces a more noticeable difference between drive modes, especially considering that we barely made use of the engine start-stop feature in normal drive mode during our traffic-free highway drive. In any event, we immensely enjoyed our drive in both directions, in normal mode and in sport mode. From our perspective, it's totally worth the small fuel premium that you have to pay to drive in sport mode for the little extra oomph and sportier drive that you get in return. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, and see you next time.